Howdy folks, and welcome to part 5.2 of my comprehensive guide to PFSense 2.3. In this video, I'm going to be talking about RRD graphs. Your PFSense box is going to log a whole bunch of information all the time, and this is going to be things like system information, um, things like processor usage, memory usage, um, it's going to log traffic information, so uh, you know bandwidth uh, on all the interfaces, number of packets passing through the interfaces. It's going to keep track of the interface quality, um, so it's going to keep track of uh, ping to the internet, uh, packet loss, um, and you can have other services like NTP, which I'm going to talk about in uh, a later video. It's going, it can uh, track all sorts of statistics, and uh, it keeps them in a database which can easily be graphed. Now. One of the issues with constant logging is that it uses more and more space on your disk. Of course, if you are constantly saving data every couple, every couple seconds, uh, eventually, I mean, given enough time, um, no matter what size of hard drive you have in your router, eventually it's going to fill up and the system is going to crash, which of course is not very sustainable. So. PFSense employs a, uh, a tool called RRD Tool, and RRD stands for Round Robin Database. And the idea behind a uh, Round Robin Database is that it is a fixed size database that does not get any larger uh, as time progresses. So what that means is if you have enough disk space to create the database, then you will always have enough space um, for all the data it can, con it can contain. So uh, the way that RRD um, works is it stores um, basically detailed information for a short period of time, and then as the time span increases, it stores less and less information. And uh, so you have more granularity now and less later uh, and less in, in the past uh, up to a certain point. And there is a, there is a, there is a point where you have to stop um, because, uh, of course, I mean, theoretically, you have to limit the time span, uh, or otherwise it, it would, of course, increase in size. An RRD tool uh, caps at four years worth of history. So uh, your PFSense box will always keep four years worth of history, um, if possible. And of course, this VM was just installed. It doesn't really have any traffic going through it. So the graphs are going to be kind of boring and also not going to be uh, not going to have that much stuff in them. But uh, of course, uh, I can show you them anyway. So under um, under status, you can check RRD graphs, and uh, you have a bunch of tabs for basically all of the different services uh, and all of the different categories that these graphs are generated for. So the system, for example, um, looking at processor graphs, um, the shortest time span is eight hours, and uh, it's done over a one minute average for those eight hours. And then the time span moves up to one day, one week, one month, three months, one year, and then four years is the longest time span. So after four years, technically data starts getting overwritten, and that's why it's called round robin. The idea is it starts, uh, you know, it starts at one end, writes all the way, and then goes back again. So with uh, the system graphs, um, it sort of uh, takes a bit of getting used to to read some of the uh, the RRD tool output graphs uh, because they have a lot of information on them. Um, some of them some of them have uh, several different types of information, um, and they put them on uh, the same scale or different scales. Um, so it's kind of difficult to uh, to see what's going on. So for example, the processor graph, for example, the CPU usage is actually down here. And this black line is the number of processes. So these are percentages, and this is just an absolute number. And they're both put on the same graph. Now, I personally don't like this, but that's the way RRD tool uh, works. And it, this is just a this is a standard tool um, that is used in so many um, so many platforms. It's not just PFSense that uses this. This graph is very common, and you'll see this graph, uh, this type of graph. Um, on a lot of different platforms, not just for networking, but um, servers and all sorts of stuff. So it's just a standard kind of. Um, I know that PFSense will be updating. I know RRD graph, uh, RRD tool just got a, a major update. Um, so at some point, PFSense will pull that update and uh, you'll be able to make uh, more changes to the graphs. But until that time, um, this is the way they are. 
And of course, you can see uh, the averages uh, basically get uh, wider as the time span gets larger. And that's how, uh, that's how it condenses uh, this information uh, into a, a basically a, a larger time span without using more memory. Uh, and of course, you can look at, think for example, you can look at number of states that are currently open, um, the throughput of the router in bits per second. You can look at memory statistics. So you can see how much free memory you have, um, cached memory, active, inactive memory. And you can look at MBUFs. So in this case, the system is relatively stable on MBUFs, but it doesn't have much traffic going through it. You can look at traffic, which is generally more interesting. Of course, there's no traffic on this VM because it really doesn't do anything. But you can see traffic for the WAN. You can see traffic for the LAN across all different time spans. Again, you can look at number of packets. So packets, packets per second, it's just basically a, a throughput rate on each of the interfaces. Quality is a, a very interesting one. Um, this is something you don't normally see um, on, on your sort of regular wireless routers. And this is using D-Pinger. Uh, on older uh, installs of PFSense, it would be A-Pinger, but this is using D-Pinger. And basically what your router does is it sends out a, a ping on the WAN to the nearest uh, router in your ISP's network, and the router should return uh, a response. And it continually sends out these pings, like once per second almost. And as a result, um, it can do a couple things with that data. First of all, it can measure how long it takes to actually get there and back. So it can calculate the round trip time um, to uh, the first router in your ISP's network. The other thing it can do is it can detect how many of those packets actually make it back. So it can detect packet loss uh, over your connection as a percentage, and it can log that as well. And this is really useful if, if you have a flaky ISP connection. Now, right now, um, you'll notice that the delay, the actual, um, this is another one of those, this is one of those graphs that has a kind of odd units. Um, you can see that the delay is the, the ping. And you'll notice how incredibly good it is. And it's because, um, like I mentioned before, this virtual machine, this virtual PFSense box is actually on my LAN. It's not actually connected to the internet. And the, the device that it's pinging is my actual PFSense router. Um, so it's just going over a gigabit LAN. So that's why this ping is so good. If you're on a real network, um, your ping may be you know, 10, 20, 30 milliseconds. Um, so it's gonna be much larger than this. And you can actually watch it fluctuate on a daily basis. Yeah, at nighttime, the ping usually gets better. And it, during the day and during peak hours, it usually gets worse because the traffic, you can actually see that, uh, which is kind of cool. Packet loss uh, is express, uh, expressed as a percent. And this is basically percent of uh, packets that, that got lost. Um, uh, amount of pings that got lost. And it's given as percentage and it's given as negative. Uh, so currently there's no packet loss, but on a device that has packet loss, you would see a uh, basically red um, red below the zero axis in percentage. So it's, uh, it's this is one of those graphs that has a, a sort of the dual axis. Um, and it's, it's kind of odd when you first see it, but uh, it, it hopefully uh, will make more sense uh, once you've uh, once you've sort of understood the way the scales are done. The other thing that you'll notice is uh, there's different colors for different um, different delays. And uh, this graph will actually uh, color, uh, basically the, the graph will start out gray and it will get more and more red the worse and worse the ping is. So you can easily, you know, at a glance, look at it and see what's going on, see what relative, uh, relative pings you have. NTP, um, which I'm gonna talk about in a future, uh, future video, um, it basically, uh, if you enable this, this is not enabled by default, but you can, under the NTP settings, you can enable uh, these graphs, and it will actually show the, uh, the, uh, the basically the jitter and the, uh, the wander of your clock with reference to some network time standard. And uh, this can be actually kind of just, it's, it's more of an interesting thing to watch rather than something that you really need to look at. And there are other um, services, for example, DHCP and stuff can also create uh, RRD graphs to show things like number of clients connected, things like that, which can give you information as to, you know, what times of day are there the most users, things like that. Uh, and you have to enable those. And I'll, I'll talk about enabling those in uh, their respective videos. So um, that's, that's pretty much all for NTP. Um, NTP does not take up a lot of memory. Um, all of the NTP graphs, if you were to enable NTP for every service, so all of these plus a couple others, um, NTP or uh, R the RRD graphs are 
probably gonna be maybe five or six megabytes in total. So really, uh, ba barely anything in space. Um, so even if you're running this off of a flash drive or a, a you know SD card or something, you can afford to run RRD graphs. Just be sure that you've got the uh, the virtual RAM file systems enabled, so that you're not constantly writing this data to your uh, your your you know USB flash drive or SD card or whatever, because that's of course going to wear out the flash memory very quickly. But um, yeah, uh, these are, are really great. And uh, uh, in the next video, when I talk about backing backup and restore, um, you can actually backup and uh, restore all of these databases um, through PFSense's built-in um, built-in backup system. So uh, you can actually um, back up all of these these uh, these databases uh, very very easily. Um, so you can always have them, uh, even if you change hardware or um, the hardware crashes and you know burns. You have to get uh, new stuff. Or um, if you want to keep data beyond the four-year mark. Um, of course, as long as you make a backup of the database once every four years, you will theoretically not lose everything. Um, so yeah, uh, I think that's pretty much everything for RRD graphs. Uh, I just wanted to mention them on their own because they are quite useful. Um, and I want to make sure that uh, uh, you know as much about them as, as you can. So uh, until the next video, thanks for watching.